From Scott Circle to DuPont Circle, GW to Georgetown, homeless encampments are now nestled across our nation's capital. This is my tent here. William Everett has been living in a tent in McPherson Square for the past 10 months. Why don't you like the shelters? They check to see you got a knife, gun, bottle of liquor, but they don't do no drug testing. The district says it saw a 40% spike in the number of encampments as a result of the pandemic and along T Street in Shaw. It's just a difficult situation, very sad to see. Neighbors are at a breaking point. The needles on the floor, the drug use. The people traffic, you know, seeing people out of their element because they're high on a, a substance. Elisa Figueroa and Anna Chica say it all came with the homeless encampment outside their commercial cleaning business. DC government finally cleaning up the camp after months of calls and complaints and a growing public health and rodent problem. Seven of them. Seven of them. Seven of them. What lies underneath is more than rats and roaches. It's real lives. How do we um, hold the government accountable when it comes to homeless people? What do they have in place for them? When we see tents and encampments and people living on the streets, sleeping in door wells, we, we realize we need to do more. Wayne Turnage is DC's deputy mayor for Health and Human Services. His agency monitors the city's homeless encampments, only moving to shut them down if they're blocking the use of public space or when the encampment threatens public safety or health like two rat hole infested encampments that were occupying National Park Service land across from the DC Convention Center. In a 60 day period leading up to the, the closure, there had been 25 arrests in that park. Uh, we had seized over $12,000 of, of narcotics. Uh, there was a handgun that was found in the park. Two of the residents had been involved in stabbings. So clearly that area needed to be, to be, to be dealt with. A WUSA 9 viewer named Rees took these photos of the encampment days before it was shut down. To me, it's just really sad that the city just kind of allows this to happen and isn't doing more to kind of help with the situation. But there has also been progress. During a pilot program, the city successfully placed 100 out of 139 unsheltered residents who wanted housing into apartments, with nine more slated for placement later this year. And the length of time it has taken to find housing has gone down from as much as nine months to four or five. Still, that pilot program has challenges. We have enough vouchers to pay for every person who is unhoused. Uh, the question of whether or not we have, whether or not there's enough housing supply is a lot more complicated. Back on T Street, business owners say it's the city's response that is complicated. Not one department's in charge of everything. So we constantly have to reach out to different people. And while Turnage said the district has tried to streamline the reporting process. Maybe we need to do a better job of explaining that there is a central point of contact. The streets of DC remain littered with questions in search of a long-term solution. Because they, they moved them from here, but they're going somewhere else. Eric Flack, WUSA 9.